In this video series, we're going to be looking at practicing deriving expressions for indicated variables. Practice for the AP Physics 1 exam. Remember to pause or rewind the video as needed. Problem number two. A block slides with negligible friction down a ramp, leaving with an initial angle theta measured above the horizontal. Derive an expression for the max height of the block above the launch point in terms of h, theta, and fundamental constants. So here's what the block will do. The block is going to slide down here, launch, and then fly through the air. Now, with that said, falling down the ramp and getting to the end of the ramp should lead you to a conclusion of conservation of energy because there is a change of height and clearly you're accelerating so there's going to be a change in speed those are two pretty easy ways of knowing when to use conservation of energy and here we have projectile motion but it's projectile motion with a launched angle with a launching angle Why is that important? Well, when you're launching with a launch angle right here, that V naught, that initial velocity is going to have to have components, V naught X and V naught Y, where V naught X, if you recall, is V naught times the cosine of the angle and V naught Y is V naught times the sine of the angle. So you're gonna need that when you get to that part of the problem. What Again, concept links these two, the velocity. The velocity at the end of the energy problem becomes the initial velocity of the projectile. Velocity will be the unifying variable pretty much in every problem. Let's begin. So I'm going to choose the initial part of the problem here. I'm going to call this uh, the initial part of the problem right here. And I'm going to call this the final part of the problem at the end. So the an energy initial would be, I have initial potential energy, therefore I'm going to write MGH. The block is released from rest, so I'm going to write initial kinetic energy is zero. My initial final energy, which is right there when it leaves the ramp, I'm going to let my final potential energy equal zero only because the dashed line seems to represent the lowest reference point of the problem. And I'm obviously flying off with a speed, so I've got a final kinetic energy, and I'm going to write one half mv squared for that. Your equation would be mgh equals one half mv squared. So we'll begin there. Okay, so conservation energy is the first part. We go energy initial equals energy final, in which case mgh equals one half mv squared. Remember, v is the linking variable, so we're going to solve for v. Multiply by two, divide by mass, square root. And v equals the square root of 2gh. Okay, so there's the first part. Now, for the projectile motion, okay, I'm going to find v naught x and v naught y. So v naught x is going to be v naught cosine of your angle. So it's going to be, well, what was v naught? That is v naught. So we're going to write 2gh cosine theta. Uh, that's for v naught x, excuse me. V naught y would be V naught times the sine of the angle, which would be the square root of two times G times H times the sine of theta. Now, in order to find an expression for the maximum height, well, there's two equations on the AP exam that deal with finding um, essentially y, the vertical height. One would be y equals y naught plus v naught y t minus one half g t squared. Well, that's gonna be problematic because we don't have an expression yet for the time it takes to get 
to the highest point. So for now, that's going to be a problem. The other equation is vy squared equals v naught y squared minus 2 times g times delta y, where y naught is equal to 0. Well, guess what? At the top right here, vy is also equal to 0. Recall that the vertical velocity is getting smaller. The vertical velocity is zero at the top. And the ver vertical velocity increases right on the way down. But we get to cancel that. So that should be your helpful equation right there. So Vy squared equals V naught Y squared minus 2GY. And ultimately, you're solving for y, that's your, your maximum height, h. So we can change the variable. Change the variable to an h. Make sure that we zero that out. And this becomes 0 equals v naught y squared minus 2g h. Go ahead and add this to the other side. And 2gh equals v naught y squared. Divide by 2g. And h, maximum height, is going to be v naught y squared over 2g. So v naught y was this value right here. So we're going to go 2gh, the square root of 2gh, sine theta, over, uh, and we're going to square that, over 2 times g. Okay, well, when we square all of this, we essentially get, just the, the square cancels the square root. So we get 2gh and then sine squared theta divided by 2g. You all can see that 2g will cancel. And h uh, is a little h. The maximum height is equal to big H, which is the height of the hill, times sine squared theta. experiment were repeated with a ball that rolled without slipping down a ramp, would the friction be higher, lower, or the same? Well, a ball rolling without slipping also has rotational kinetic energy. Okay, so with rot since, since they both start from the same hill, so we're repeated, everything's repeated. So the height of the hill H is the same, which means your gravitational potential energy, your initial energy, is the same. Since you have rotational kinetic energy now, uh, some of that is taken away from your total energy and the remainder is going to be your translational kinetic energy. So your, your translational kinetic energy is now less. Which means now the speed off the end of the ramp is less. Block's height, H, 
will be lower. If the original experiment were repeated on the moon, would the maximum height be higher, lower, or the same? Well, look back at your original expression, h equals h sine theta. So what does this tell you? h is only proportional to h, and h is only proportional to the sine of the, the angle. So what does that mean? On the moon, g is different but you can see h is not proportional to g. Height is independent of g. Therefore the height aim, the height h will be the same. 